Hi, my name is Rick Eads. I work for Agilent Technologies. This is a series of videos where we're going to be talking about PCI Express 3.0. In this segment of the videos, what I'd like to discuss is what we're going to do in, a, in, the, in the context of the PCI SIG as far as testing a PCI Express device. Uh, the PCI SIG for member companies have provided a tool that we refer to as SIG test that is available from the PCI SIG at the PCI SIG website www.pcisig.com. Now this tool is used to analyze PCI Express Gen 1 and Gen 2 and soon we'll be releasing it for PCI Express 3.0 analysis. So I'd like to show you what that looks like for PCI Express 3.0. In one of the earlier segments what we did is we captured a signal from a real PCI Express 3.0 device operating at 8 gigabits per second. And, and with this signal what I want to do is show you first off that we have here preset 7 that's, that has been captured on the oscilloscope, as well as the clock. The PCI Express reference clock operates at uh, uh, 100 megahertz, and for the purpose of a root complex device test, it's necessary to capture both the clock and the data element. So we're going to go ahead and sh show that we've captured 8 million points of the of the data signal as well as the clock, and then we're going to save this to a file. Um, for the purpose of of analyzing a signal captured on Agilent Technologies equipment, we want to save that in a binary file, all waveforms. So what we'll do here is specify a binary file, and then we'll type in a file name, PCIe 3.0, and then we'll hit return. Now that's a, a, a nice feature for the, the, this particular oscilloscope because by having both the data and the clock in a single file, when we do the analysis of multiple lanes, it becomes a lot easier for us to analyze multiple files without getting the clock and the data mixed up. To analyze the signal that we just captured, we're going to go ahead and boot SIGTEST. SIGTEST is the program that's provided by the PCI SIG for doing analysis of PCI Express 3.0 signals. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we select the proper uh, type of file that we're going to choose. So this is a dual port file, differential, and it's also combined, meaning that we've included both clock and data. So if we go into PCI Express at the desktop, we should see a bin file. That is our PCI Express 3.0 file that we saved. So we'll load that file. And now since we have, um, for Gen 3, the requirement to also include package losses in the analysis that we make of the PCI Express 3.0 signal, it's necessary to select this embed function. What this does is it prepares the file that we're going to analyze to be convolved with a package loss model, which consists of S parameters of a standard package model that again is provided by the PCI SIG. We're going to go ahead and click on load and verify. And then we ha have to make sure we select the proper technology, with it, which in this case is PCI Express 3.0 system. And then we want to select the proper template file. In this case, the template file we use applies a CTLE plus DFE equalizer, and then also loads a S parameter file representing the package model that's provided by the PCI SIG. So we select those, and then we go ahead and click on the test button to initiate the test and analysis of the clock and the data file that we've captured of our PCI Express 3.0 signal. When SIG test completes, we can click on this results tab and we'll see the results from our analysis. We can see that this particular board passes. I'm going to point out a few things about the results. First off, up here in the upper right hand side, you'll see that what SIG test reports are the CTL settings and the DFE taps that are reported and used by SIG test in its optimization of the signal. We also have TJ and RJ numbers that are reported. And another thing we look at really closely for Gen 3 because of the receiver equalizer is the eye height. So in this case, we've got, about, uh, we've got good eye height, we pass uh, with flying colors, and uh, we also will look at eye width occasionally. If we hit our view HTML report, we're able to see a report that presents us with an eye diagram that shows us both the transition bits as well as the non-transition bits. And that's useful to give us a sense of just how much margin we have in the PCI Express signal. So in this case, we, we would have passed this device with flying colors and would have moved on to additional testing were we in a workshop environment and performing PCI Express 3.0 testing on it. PCI Express 3.0 signaling runs at 8 gigabits per second, and this series deals with a lot of the elements of testing a PCI Express 3.0 transmitter. For more information, see the website that appears at the bottom of the screen.